Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to the FSX404 channel. Today I'm going to do an actual weight and balance uh, calculation. This tutorial itself will be a little bit longer. I'll have more parts to it, including a planning a flight. But the first thing I want to do is I want to do the weight and balance. This is going to be a weight and balance for a Cessna 182RG. To do a proper weight and balance for an airplane, we actually have to go to its pilot operating handbook or the POH and in case of older airplanes, uh, sometimes they're called information manuals. So for today, we're going to go to a Skyline RG 1978 model R182. This is the retractable gear Cessna 182. Now one of the first few pages in the pilot operating handbook, the POH, will give us the performance specifications. We're going to go here and we're going to find out what the maximum takeoff weight is for the Cessna 182 RG. So if we go to maximum weight, we're going to see the maximum ramp weight is uh, 3,112 pounds and the maximum takeoff or landing weight is 3,100 pounds. You have to be very careful because on some of these bigger airplanes, as the airplanes get bigger, the takeoff weight may be 3,100 pounds, but the landing weight may be lower. For example, in the new Cessnas, the T182s, the turbo Cessnas, let me just show you a quick page from that operating handbook. You can see that the, for the newer Cessnas, the takeoff weight is 3,100 pounds, but the landing weight is 2,950 pounds. So you have to be very careful not to go over your landing weight too. But for a 1978 Cessna 182 RG, the takeoff weight and the landing weight are both the same, they're 3,100 pounds. So now that we know the maximum takeoff weight for our Cessna, let's actually go and do our weight and balance problem for the flight I'm going to have. In the section 6 of the POH, uh, so that's the weight and balance section, actually page 610 you can see, we do have a sample loading problem. You got the weight in one column, you got the moment in the other column. Now there's two things that are going to be important when we're doing the weight and balance. The first thing is our weight. We're going to make sure that we're at maximum weight or below for takeoff and we're going to make sure that the moment of the plane lets us fall in our center of gravity envelope. We want our airplane to be inside this envelope like these green dots are. Now if these dots are outside, if our center of gravity is outside the envelope, that airplane is not safe for flying. The flight characteristics of the plane can change, especially when you come back to land or during takeoff. When the airplane is uh, flying slow, you might get some unexpected flight characteristics from that plane and you can get yourself killed. So what you want to do, you always want to have the plane that you're flying inside this flight envelope. Now this is the second page, center of gravity moment envelope, page 612 inside the POH, and we're going to use this at the very end. Now let's go back to our uh, sample loading problem. We're going to do our own, Cessna did here, one is an example, but we're going to do our own because we have our own weights and most importantly, our airplane has its own weight and its own moment. Now in the US, every airplane that's approved for flying by the FAA has been checked by the FAA. The FAA will weigh the plane and they will find out what its moment is. This is very specific to every airplane. One of the documents you're required to have when you're flying your plane is the weight and balance of that airplane. Now I know the weight and balance of the airplane I'm going to fly and I have the numbers that I have to plug in. So number one, basic empty weight of the airplane, that's given to us. And from the weight and balance of the airplane, our airplane weighs 1,890 pounds and its moment is 66.2. Like I said, these are the given numbers that we get inside the airplane. As you can see from the Cessna sample, 1,808 pounds and the moment of 62.0. That is probably average Cessna, what they did in the factory. But obviously, the weight has gone up. And the reason the weight has gone up is because the guy that had the airplane, that bought the airplane, he has put his own instrumentation in it. He has put his own IFR instrumentation in it. He has put in a GPS in it. He has put a DME in it. And he's put some other very cool stuff in that plane. But you can see that all that equipment has added about 80 pounds onto the plane. So we're going to use our weight of uh, 1,890 pounds and our moment of 66.2. Now we're going to go to a part that we have control over. The second thing on the list is usable fuel. Now for my flight, I plan on having 70 gallons for that flight, 35 in each tank. 70 gallons weighs 420 pounds. How did I get that? Well, if we look up here, fuel weighs 6 pounds a gallon. So 6 times 70 gives us 420 pounds. Now we know how many pounds of fuel we're going to have in, so now we need to find out what the moment of that fuel is. To find out what the moment of that fuel is, we need to go to the loading graph. Of course, this is also inside the POH in the section 6. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the fuel line. There's the fuel line. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to put 420 pounds 
we're going to put a straight line until we hit our line, the fuel line, and then we're going to go straight down. Then you can see that 420 pounds of fuel gives us a load moment of 20. So we're going to put 20 in the moment. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to add the weight of the pilot and the co-pilot in this case. I'm going to be flying with a co-pilot in this airplane, and together we weigh 390 pounds. This is America, people, and we are heavier than you, so don't be surprised. So both of us weigh 390 pounds. From this point, we need to find out what the moment is. Now let's go back to the loading graph. Let's find the pilot and co-pilot line. There it is. Let's go to 390 pounds. Let's follow 390 pounds until it hits the line, and let's go down. It's 14.6. So our moment for 390 pounds for the pilot and co-pilot is 14.6. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the second row of passengers. Now we are going to have passengers for this flight and there's going to be two of them and those two passengers together weigh 280 pounds. So let's go back to the loading graph. Let's find the second row of passenger line. There it is. 280 pounds. Let's follow it until we hit the line. Let's go down. That's 20.5. So we're going to put 20.5 in the second row passengers. That's their moment. Next thing is the baggage. We are going to have some baggage on this flight and we're going to have about 30 pounds. Let's go back to our loading graph, the baggage line. 30 pounds, let's follow it down and it says 3.0. That's our moment. Let's go back to the loading sample and let's add 3 to the baggage moment. Now we're not going to have any baggage in the area B, so that's 0, 0. So all we have to do now is add up the weight column and that gives us 3,010 pounds. And then we're going to add up the moment column which gives us 124.3. Now this is our ramp weight. This is what the airplane is going to weigh when we all get in. But there's more things we have to do. We have to take into account that we're going to start the airplane, we're going to taxi the airplane, we're going to do the run up, we're going to get our clearances and all that according to Cessna takes two gallons to do. So we're going to waste two gallons of fuel on the ground before we even take off. So as we go back, we're going to put minus 12, that's minus 12 pounds, and as you can see in their sample problem, they also had minus 12, that is why. And just by looking at what the Cessna did of a minus 0 0.6, we're going to put minus 0 0.6 in a moment line. Now we're going to take that 3,010 pounds, and we're going to subtract 12 pounds from it, and we're going to get 2,998 pounds. That is going to be our takeoff weight. Now let's do the moment. For the moment, 124.3 minus 0.6. That gives us 123.7 for the moment. Now we have our takeoff weight of 2,998 pounds, and we have our moment of 123.7. We're not done with this yet. Now we have to take these two numbers, and we have to plot them in our flight envelope. So let's find 2,998. That's it. We'll just follow the line. Let's plug in 123.7 for the moment, and wherever they meet, we're going to put the green dot on there. As you can see, this airplane falls inside the envelope, so we're safe to fly it. Another thing that this graph tells me is that our center of gravity will be a little bit to the front. It's not exactly centered, it's a little bit to the front. Now why is that good information to have? That information is good to have because of the trim. We're going to trim the airplane for takeoff. So for this graph, especially for a Cessna 182 and bigger planes, once you get into these bigger planes, you really need to fly them with your trim because you're going to need a lot of muscle to move it around if you don't. So for this takeoff, I'm going to put the trim just a little bit down, just so it helps me out lift off. Once we take off, I'll trim the plane to climb at 85 knots for the first 1,000 feet and then to 95 knots after 1,000 feet, but at least I get an idea of the trim. something that may not be necessary for smaller planes but it's a good habit to get it into and that is to get a center of gravity when we land obviously during the flight we're gonna burn up fuel so our center of gravity is gonna change a little bit and the reason I like to get into a habit of doing this is because like I said in the beginning some of the planes some of the bigger planes once you get into these bigger planes they may have one takeoff weight but they may have a different landing weight and you have to make sure that you're under that landing weight now in this case the takeoff weight of 3100 pounds is the same as the landing weight but like I said it's a good thing to get into a habit of doing this now I know for my flight planning which I haven't gone over yet I will go over that in the next video I know that I'm gonna use up about 15 gallons of fuel for this flight so 15 gallons of fuel times 6 pounds is 90 pounds. So our airplane is going to be 90 pounds lighter when it's landing. Now we also have to go to the loading graph to get the moment of those 90 pounds because we got to subtract the moment too. We're losing the fuel and we're going to lose some moment. So let's just go to the loading graph. 
Let's find the fuel line. Let's draw a line at 90 pounds until it hits the fuel line. Let's go down and that is 4.4. So let's go back to our weight and balance. We're going to subtract 90 pounds from 2,998 and we're going to subtract 4.4 from our moment. So 2,998 minus 90 is 2,908 pounds. That is our landing weight. And our moment is going to be 123.7 minus 4.4 and that is going to give us 119.3. Now we're going to take these two numbers, 2,908 and uh, 119.3, and we're going to plot them on our graph. So 2,998, there's the line, 119.3, and we can put the green dot there, and then we can see that we're still inside the flight envelope, so we're good for this flight. And this is how you do an actual weight and balance for the plane. All you guys who will be pilots will learn how to do this. This is the most important part of the flight, because if you're not inside this envelope, you're not going anywhere. So thank you guys for watching. On the next video, I'm going to have an actual flight plan. The stuff that you see in the Microsoft Flight Simulator that does that for you. How do you get all those numbers? I'll go through all that and I explain it. And I think you guys will enjoy it. I think it's very interesting, especially for young new pilots. All new student pilots love to do flight planning. And I'll actually go over that and I'll show you how to do that. So until next time, thank you guys for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys soon.